G'day, Steve from Lovells Adelaide, and today we'll be taking you through our Toyota Land Cruiser 200 Series Sahara. This vehicle has been upgraded with a 4200 kilo GVM remote reservoir shock absorbers and is ideally set up for touring, towing heavy vans. So this is our 200 Series, our latest uh, incarnation that we've built after many years of building the cars. We work out what customers like, what products work, what looks good, what performs really well and also what we fit a lot of. So it really combines all the product we fitted, all the product knowledge from the last few years. Trying the new laser light bars, for example. This one's connected to the CAN bus, picks up the speed, and it can vary the actual beam width and length. and also has a low mode as well, a bit like a really intense fog light. Really cool product. With the carbon winch under the, the fold up there, a really light winch, works really, really well. It includes an isolator switch and remote control. Summer bar, fog lights, the recovery points underneath. So we fitted the ARB Summit Bull Bar, colour coded, and also their brush rails and side steps. Clear view mirrors, next gen clear view mirror. We colour code the scalps where a customer wants it. We also can fit the Cat 6 indicators in here for higher GVM upgrades that require the uh, Cat 6 indicator. The Safari Armax Snorkel as well, that's always a go-to, good for higher powered vehicles such as this. We also fit the Rhino rack for this particular case. The Rhino's a very popular product, uh, well engineered, a good fit and a good price. We also can fit some side lights uh, and also the UHF antenna in this particular case where you don't want it on the bull bar for everyday use. It's, it's a 3dB antenna, good for sort of medium distance or for hilly country, more so than uh, the deserts where you might fit an antenna on the front instead. The CSA alloy wheels, they're a brand new wheel on the market, look pretty snazzy I'd have to say, and also with the Maxxis razors. Moving around the back, fit the 12-pin plug, and some plug in a cover, video input for caravan, fuel channel, three channel, whatever's required. In this particular case we're running the factory tow bar, but we'll also switch that out for the Lovells 4-ton tow bar as well, if I'm towing a boat, camp, trailer, that sort of thing. Inside. We like to keep wiring neat when we're coming out to the top, so we bring, always bring everything in through these uh, grommets at the top rather than having a mess of wires or putting holes in the top. It's well worth the additional time it takes just to make a really neat job. We fitted a single pot drawer in this particular case. For all your usual stuff you can carry, like to carry. We also fit out the side panel here with controls for the accessories out on board. So interior lights, as you can see on the tailgate up there, dual colour, white or amber depending on the situation. We have the independent switches for the exterior lights as well, the exterior work lights. The, in this particular car, the Anson plug is controlled by a solenoid and turn it on or off. And we also have the compressor built in as well, the ARB twin compressor with the air tank in this particular case. Um, we do our own special modifications with that with different plumbing lines and so on using uh, heavy duty truck parts. Uh, also on here, we have obviously the air outlet but also controls for the airbags, the rear airbags, so we can inflate. And you'll see the gauge, it's a little bit hard to, to see there, maybe a little bit dark. Uh, in this particular case, reading 22 and 22. And we can deflate on demand as well. Back down to 4 or 5 psi for normal running. Uh, here we have the iTech World Charge Monitor for the 120 amp hour lithium battery we have under the bonnet. Uh, only drawing 50 odd milliamps presently. Currently at 120 amp hours, so fully charged. In the side panel, as I mentioned, the ARV compressor, twin compressor, uh, using their mounting bracket. A great accessory, really handy for onboard air charging, uh, inflating tyres, can caravan tyres, you know, toys, all that sort of thing with a single drawer. We can still run it as a six-seater. Pretty handy for uh, getting an extra family member in occasionally. The Sahara's got a very full switch panel here, so we fit the Light Force aftermarket switch panel, which gives you an extra five additional switch slots. In this particular car, we've got a lock-up kit fitted, a torque converter lock-up kit. We've also got the Red Arc Tow Pro as well, very essential for uh, you know, your, your larger towing things. But we can also move factory switches and also fit additional switches as well. So internally we've got the uh, GME XRS370 UHF on a click-on mount. In the, the factory head unit here we have a, an advanced ICE video input system where we can bring in additional 
features such as the HEMA off-road map or an extra switch. We've actually got an extra camera fitted inside the rear tailgate. So if the, the rear of the car is full of luggage, etc., you can still get a reverse camera image through here as required. If we have the caravan hooked up then and an extra video input, we can then bring on the video feed from the rear of the camera into the central cluster. So without having some external display on the dash or on the mirror, which are typically very small and very difficult to read. These video inputs here are permanently live. So you, when you're driving, they won't switch off, they stay on. The advanced ice unit can also do a picture in picture mode where we have the rear view camera permanently displayed while we can have the HEMA map going or our factory map going or our audio program running as well. So it really takes the place of an external uh, type of small display that usually comes with these sort of rear video camera units. Uh, up here, you might see just above the mirror, we've got the controls for the light bar. I mentioned that the light bar can run different programs. We're of different beam widths, lengths, or the low flood mode. Uh, that's all controlled through this little control box here. To the left, uh, dash cam for uh, getting interesting shots on the road of uh, what people can do. Under bonnet, you'll see here we have an iTech lithium battery, a 120 amp hour battery. We're fitting them for a few years now without any problems. We run the Red Arc BCDC, a 40 amp in this particular case because the lithium can handle a 40 amp charge. Um, if we had an AGM battery there, maximum you would go to use a 20 amp or you'll cook the battery. Prevent catch can, very important for catching the fumes coming out of the crankcase on the motor to prevent them going back in through the intake and um, potentially fouling the intake uh, and damaging the left-hand turbo. Down, tucked away down the side here, you'll see there's the, uh, the current shunt for the charge monitoring that we saw in the back of the display showing us how full the battery is and how much current's being drawn at any particular time. With the carbon winch I mentioned, there was an isolator switch. Uh, there it is, just located just in there, so we can turn it on or off, isolate it as required, make sure no one can play with it externally. If you've got any questions in regards to this model or your own model, or if you've already got a GVM and you've got questions in regards to it, please leave a comment below or give us a call.